Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing my, what month is it? Uh, my March favorites. And just a disclaimer, it's a beautiful spring day outside today and the kids in my neighborhood are out running right by my house. So if you hear things like kids screaming, they're playing because it's spring break right now. Just a disclaimer. But yeah, let's hop into the video. My first favorite is sort of an odd one. I don't know. I wanted to share it because it's something that I've really been having a lot of fun with this past month. Um, and that's this camera. So, but more specifically, I'm going to be talking about the lens that I have on this camera. So this is my Canon EOS M mirrorless camera. This is actually the camera that I shot all the videos with kind of like the first year that I made videos on YouTube and it was such a pain because I couldn't autofocus. It obviously doesn't have a flip up screen so I had to have Nick like help me film all my videos or I had to like guess what the focal distance was. Like I would hold my hand out like this and focus it on the tripod with the other hand and you can totally do that. I'm not saying that you need all these fancy cameras to make YouTube videos but it's definitely been easier having a camera now that has a flip out lens. But anyway, I um, have been really into film photography since I was in high school and I have a film camera, a Canon EOS, not EOS, a Canon, why, why can't I think right now? A Canon AE-1 is my film camera that I've had for years and love so much. But I just haven't really been taking film photos as much recently. Um, I mean, I have some film in my camera right now, but honestly, I don't even remember what all the photos are from on there. And I feel like that happens with film photography, for me at least, because I like to be really particular about the pictures I take because I don't want to waste film and all that stuff. But anyway, I recently started experimenting with putting my film lenses on this mirrorless camera with a little adapter that I got on Amazon, and it's been amazing. It's so fun for me because I love using vintage film lenses. I just feel like the way they play with the light is so different than anything you're going to get in new lenses. And now as I say that out loud, I sound like such a crazy hipster, but it's true. The the way that they were made and the, um, the glass that they use, especially in the vintage Canon lenses, are just so, it's just so beautiful and so incredible. So anyway, I've been using this as my sort of just like going out and about taking photos camera and I've loved it. So the lens I have on here and also I am getting over a cold so I'm so sorry if my voice is sort of scratchy. Oh my gosh and I'm touching my microphone. How much have I done that in this video so far? Okay, off to a great start. Okay, so let's start over here. The lens I have on this camera is a Canon FD. 50 millimeter lens, but since you have to use this little adapter to fit it onto a digital camera, it makes it sort of more like an 85 lens. So it's definitely zoomed more than, you know, just like a normal camera. But I find that that also sort of makes the photo a lot more interesting. You get a lot of bokeh. So I've just been loving sort of playing around with this camera. I do, or I have used it in a couple of my videos just to get sort of B-roll shots. But for the most part, I just like this for taking photos. It's been really cool. So if you are someone who has film lenses, I wouldn't technically recommend like if you don't have any of these things to go out and buy both of these things because I don't know, that just seems like a lot to go out and do. But if you're someone who has a mirrorless camera and has Canon lenses, you know, like the say, or if you have, you know, Nikon with Nikon lenses, maybe try, you know, taking photos with your FD lenses and see how you like them. This little adapter was pretty inexpensive on Amazon, so yeah, I'm really glad that I went for it and that I've been experimenting with this new sort of creative way of taking pictures. The next thing I want to share with you guys is a YouTube channel, and I'm sure you guys have heard of them, but I just recently started really diving into their videos, and the YouTube channel is called Hot for Food, and it's a vegan cooking channel, and I absolutely love it. I just have fallen in love with Lauren and John and think that the way they talk about food is so relatable and just so 
chill, you know? I feel like if you watch their videos, you'll totally know what I mean by that. I really like their challenge videos, so I would say if you haven't watched any of their videos, go to their challenge playlist because they, I think they have like 15 or maybe 20 challenge videos and they're just really fun because you get two recipes in one video. My favorite thing that I've made from their channel recently is their cauliflower buffalo wings. I didn't have hot sauce, so I made it with um, vegan Worcestershire sauce, which was like, okay, but I'm excited to go out and get hot sauce to make that. And their vegan ranch is incredible. Like, I think that's gonna be a weekly thing that I make because it was so good, just dipped in veggies or, you know, obviously on a salad or with the buffalo wings. So I'd highly recommend their channel if you haven't watched them already. Can you guys hear that? I think they have like a wagon or something. They're just like going around and around. <laughs> Anyway, the next favorite that I wanted to share is just an activity, and that has been just taking daily walks, not every day, but a couple times a week in this nature preserve called Back Bay. It's been so beautiful because California got so much rain earlier in the season. There are just wildflowers everywhere, like even driving on the freeway. It's so colorful and beautiful. I've never seen this many wildflowers in my area, like ever, that I can remember. It feels like it's really springtime. And Back Bay is so beautiful because there are tons of mustard wildflowers, I think they're called. And they're just so tall, they're like 10 feet tall. Maybe not 10 feet tall, maybe six feet tall though. They're pretty big. And it's just so cool to see them grow every time I go back there. And just to see new varieties of wildflowers that have popped up. On that same vein though, I do have seasonal allergies and I feel like they've been worse this season because of all the wildflowers that have been blooming. So the thing that I've been doing to sort of help, you know, my allergies has been using a neti pot, <laughs> which I never thought I would talk about on the internet before, which is so funny. But if you've never heard of a neti pot, it's I think like an ancient sort of technique, but basically what you do is you put warm water and salt in this little pot and then you use it to irrigate, irrigate, is that the right word? Yeah, irrigate your nasal passages, which sounds so gross. Don't look it up online because it looks really gross to do, but I'm telling you, it has helped me so much, especially during this time where there's all this pollen in the air because it's a natural way to kind of thin mucus in your nasal passages and help remove all of that. When I was younger, I used to take allergy medicine every single day, which is fine if you do that and it works for you, but I'm happy to find these more natural things that are gentler on my body and this has really been a game changer for me because I do this, I mean, you can't just really do it in the morning and expect it to like work all through the day since it is a more natural, you know, thing, alternative. Um, I do this sometimes up to three times a day if I'm feeling really congested, but it really does help because it gets everything out of your nasal passages and helps you to just really be able to breathe freely and just feel a lot better. So if you suffer with allergies, I would highly recommend picking one of these up. I just got this at my local health food store. You can probably get them on Amazon too. It takes a little bit of getting used to like trying to figure out the correct way to put your head when you're doing it because you have to sort of like turn your head and then like um, put it in, not all the way, in, like I just put it on the like like that like I don't stick it up my nostril it's not that crazy but you have to like sort of turn your head and put it in one nostril and let the water just sort of flow through your nasal <laughs> passages and it's not that bad like once you figure out the correct way that you need to turn your head it's not hard it's not scary it doesn't hurt or anything like that it just really gives you so much relief so I would highly recommend checking out a neti pot buying one and using it if you're suffering from seasonal allergies the next thing I wanted to share with you guys is a product and it's this little tube from 100% pure and this is actually sort of like a dupe for boy brow so I know tons of you guys love Glossier and I'm not trying to say anything bad about them they're an awesome brand but I just was looking for I think I talked about this in another video I was looking for a brow product that didn't have alcohol in it because I noticed that my brows were getting sort of dried out and I thought it was because of the alcohol in boy brow and I think this is a newer product from 100% pure I've only been using it for about two weeks but I've really really loved it so far so I wanted to share it in this video with you guys because 
I said in my last video, I think it was like a makeup y video, that I would keep you updated if I found anything that I really liked for my brows. So this is called the Green Tea Fiber Brow Builder, and it's supposed to over time give you thicker, more filled in brows, which I can't really vouch for yet since I have only been using it for two weeks. But I can say that it does keep my brows in place all day. It's really easy to apply because it has a really thin little brush and I really like it. It doesn't leave my brows like crispy or crunchy at all. Compared to boy brow, it is a little bit of a thinner formula, but I find that if I just go over my brows twice, it fills them in enough to where I feel comfortable. So I'm wearing them on my brows today. I'm wearing this on my brows today and I feel like it looks really good. What do you guys think? I really like that all of 100% Pierce products are made out of recycled packaging. That's obviously something that's really important to me as someone who's trying to create less waste but it also is important that the product works and does what it's supposed to. So I would never share something that I liked just because the packaging was cool or whatever, you know, like it has to all make sense. So this is a product that for me thus far does make sense. It keeps my brows together. There's an airplane flying over. <laughs> The last product I wanted to share with you guys is sort of random and funny because I talked about kombucha in another favorites video, maybe my last one or the one before that. What can I say? I really like kombucha. And this one has been my favorite this past month. This is from Revive Kombucha and it's their free ride hibiscus fruit herbal refresher. And it looks like this. Oh, there's a hair on the bottom of my glass. Don't get grossed out. It looks like this. It's this really pretty pink color and it's so good. So I had seen Revive Kombucha in my grocery store before. I may have even bought, you know, a one-off product from them back in the day or in the past, but I really started um, looking into them more after talking to them at the Natural Products Expo. They were the only booth that I came across that was a completely zero waste booth, which I was so into, obviously. They had these little shot glasses as their testers and they had someone washing all of them during the event. They didn't even have a trash can. So anyway, I appreciate that they sell their kombucha in these big growlers for people that have problems like me and need lots of kombucha. Um, this isn't something that I buy weekly, but it is a nice little treat. Um, and it's cool because there's no plastic. Um, they have a take back program for their bottles, obviously, so you can get money back when you recycle them and their flavor combinations are just so unique. So this one has hibiscus flower, kombucha culture, obviously the cane sugar, which the, the culture eats to make the product fermented, raw lemon juice, vanilla extract, and almond extract. Um, it's perfect for spring, I feel like. It's really light and refreshing, and it's just been my favorite. So this is actually the second bottle that Nick and I have purchased over the past month, but yeah. It's a good one. I would highly recommend it if you guys can get them in your area. So those are all my favorites that I'm gonna share in this video. Thank you for sticking around through my raspy voice and through the kids playing outside. I hope you guys are having a great week. Thank you so much for liking this video, subscribing to my channel, and thank you to those of you who are supporting me on Patreon, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.